I hope you all had a peaceful afternoon and a restful evening. First head football coach of day four at SEC Media Days is Eli Drinkwitz, who is in his, entering his second year at the University of Missouri. He'll be one of two head coaches entering their second year today. Um, let me say that again. One of two head coaches today who'll be entering their second year, but their first year appearing at SEC Media Days, given what happened last year. Led his team to a CFP top 25 ranking last season for the first time since 2018, and only the third time in the program's history. Two nights ago, he was on the mound in St. Louis, throwing out the first pitch for the St. Louis Cardinals. If you happen to watch the SEC Network, our promo spots for football through the season have music from country music star Luke Combs, who uh, Eli knows and is a huge fan of. He also has a deep affection for Air Jordan shoes, and you should see the foot gear he has on today. And looking back in his life, he graduated magna cum laude, which is tied with my graduation honors. Uh, at a different university and was studi student body president at Arkansas Tech, who are the Wonder, Wonder Boys, that's what I thought. University of Missouri head football coach, Eli Drinkwitz. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, appreciate everybody being here today. You, you get to find out which of uh, the sports writers are the toughest ones who can last the day four. Obviously, there's a few empty seats here. Some guys just aren't cut out for life on the road and didn't have their pandemic legs underneath them. Uh, would be remiss if I didn't start out by uh, giving a shout out to, to Paul Feinbaum for his contract extension. Nobody tries to steal a show quite like Paul and start out SEC Media Days by leaking that news. So uh, congrats to Paul on that. Um, you know, hard hitting questions coming out of yesterday. You know, I think one of them was uh, whether or not the horns down is going to be 15 yard penalty uh, in the SEC in the future. Uh, so I asked Commissioner Sankey in the hall hallway and he gave me a strong rebuttal by saying no comment. So we'll see where that goes. But uh, excited about um, the opportunity to, to be here today and share with you about the energy of the Mizzou football program and what we're trying to build in the SEC moving forward. You know, I really felt like last year we exceeded the expectations of many of the people in the room, but also many of the people within the, within the state about what we could accomplish in, in such a challenging season. Um, you know, last year we were able to, to win five conference games. We were able to beat the defending national champions. We were able to beat Kentucky for the first time in five years, able to win both of our trophy games and avenge a loss versus Vanderbilt. We had five players drafted. Um, and so there was a lot of positive momentum to go into the offseason. We did a nice job in recruiting and continued to develop this program. Um, but we didn't meet the standard of what we want to be moving forward. And so we are continually chasing that close the gap mentality. How do we close the gap amongst the, the upper echelon teams of the SEC? And, and it's going to be a process. It's not something that just happens overnight. You know, I got to remind our fan base that, that Coach Smart and Coach Mullen have years uh, of, of experience at their school. And, and we're trying to close that gap in a hurry, but we're not going to do it overnight. But we need our fan base to continue to, to, to re-engage with us uh, and, and be excited about our program. You know, we're very fired up about the opportunity that, that lies ahead. Um, we return eight starters on defense. Uh, we return eight starters on the offensive side of the ball and four specialists. Um, we got an opportunity um, to have a, a, a really strong line of scrimmage, which is one thing that we learned last year uh, was needed in order to be successful in this league and really look forward to uh, returning an all-SEC player at, at, at the defensive end position with Trajan Jeffcoat. We were able to bring some guys back with that COVID year. Uh, and so the, really the defensive line should be a strength for us on the defensive side of the ball. We added a new defensive coordinator in Steve Wilkes, a guy with tremendous NFL pedigree and experience and also coaching in college football, uh, a, a coach who's just a, a, a tremendous leader of men uh, and a motivator of players and excited about the scheme that he's going to bring uh, and, and the energy that he brings to the football field every day. 
obviously we lost some players to the NFL and, and, and had some weaknesses there. So we went out and utilized the transfer portal to our advantage. We were able to add two uh, quality transfer defensive backs in a Caleb Evans and Allie Green. Um, we, we lost a linebacker to the second round to the Chiefs, and so we went out and added Blaze Aldridge uh, from Rice, who was an all-conference performer there. So we really felt like that we put the pieces in place on the defensive side of the ball. That was obviously a weakness for us, uh, especially towards the end of the season. And so we're excited about the opportunity for us to improve. Obviously, the proof will be in the pudding, and we got to get those guys going in fall camp. On the offensive side of the ball, you know, Coach, uh, or, or Commissioner Sankey said I, this was my second season, but first year at SEC Media Days. We're trying to get Connor Bazelik a back-to-back -back SEC Freshman of the Year. I don't know if that's possible, but with the COVID exception, maybe it is. Uh, you know, SEC Co-Freshman of the Year, so we're, we have a proven commodity at the quarterback position. Um, and so we're excited about the growth that he can show and earn. We've added some playmakers around him. Obviously, Mookie Cooper is a guy that, that we're excited about to go along with Kiki Chisholm and Toski Dove. And then Tyler Beatty at tailback, when he was featured for us last year in our games against LSU, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, uh, South Carolina, he really did some nice things for us. Uh, he's got some explosive ability um, and, and, and really can do a lot of different things out of the backfield. So a lot of things to be um, energized about for a fan base and for a program. And so with that, uh, we look forward to the 2021 football season and uh, look forward to the challenges that lie ahead. And with that, I believe the next thing I'm supposed to do is open it up for questions. You got it, Coach. Thank you very much. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Victoria, Lawrence, and Fuller have microphones, and we'll get one to you. We'll start down here in the front left with Bob. Uh, hey, Eli, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat. Is that nice to be in the same room with you finally? Um, you got two kids on both sides of the ball from Fayetteville with, with uh, Byers and Bannister. Wondering, uh, what you're expecting from them. And you brought Akeel here today. What, what went into that decision? That, that's a pretty big honor. Yeah, those two young men do, do a lot of different things for us in our program. I mean, Barrett Bannister is a guy who uh, seems to always play his best game against the Arkansas Razorbacks. I guess it just means more to him being from the state and playing against those guys. And he's a guy that does all the little things right, is an extra gritty player, uh, works extremely hard at his craft to perform uh, above his capabilities on a day-to-day -day basis. He's the type of player that Mizzou football uh, has always been about. He's the type of player that our fan base can really embrace because he's a blue-collar mentality, uh, works for everything that, that he's been given in life. You know, Akil Byers is a young man that, that – uh, uh, is a leader on the defensive side of the ball with a lot of game reps, a lot of experience. Obviously, he's from Fayetteville, um, has the potential, has really invested himself into this season, mm -hmm. into our football team. And uh, it's a true honor for him to be here today. I was able to bring both an offensive and a defensive lineman. Again, just to emphasize both to our team um, and, and, and to uh, really our fan base that it's got to start at the lines of scrimmage for us to be successful. Which we'll go over here on our left side. John. John Adams, KnoxNews.com. Uh, since your popularity is surging right now, I was just wondering, when you sign an autograph, do you sign Eli or Eliah? I sign E and then a lot of squiggly lines. And if anybody can make it out, that's up to them. But uh, I go with Eliah and then, a, and, and then go from there. I don't know about the popularity of surging type deal, but Twitter's not real, just so we're on the same page. Coach, we'll go in the center section along the right aisle, about halfway back. Connor O'Gara, Saturday Down South. You brought up uh, yep. wondering about horns down and if that was going to be a penalty if Texas were to come yeah. to the SEC. Yeah. Uh, besides that, what was your initial reaction to hearing the report about Texas and Oklahoma having that interest? I've been trying to tell people everybody wants to play in the SEC, man. And if uh, you can attract a couple of, of really good schools to come play, that's great. Uh, I immediately called my athletic director and Jim and told him that uh, if the commissioner changes and adds two games to our schedule, I think we all understand that Mark Womack is going to put both Texas and OU on Mizzou's schedule moving forward. So we're ready for any challenge that uh, is thrown at us. Uh, no, in all seriousness, uh, control what you can control. Uh, that's all speculative. Uh, you know, this is talking season, as a, a coach one 
once phrased it in speculative season and it gives y'all a lot of things to do but what we're worried about is converting third downs and scoring touchdowns and uh, I, they ain't on our schedule this year and if the commissioner decides or our presidents decide that's what it'll be in the future then hopefully Missouri employs me long enough to see that coach will stay in the same section a couple rows ahead Hey, Eli, Jordan Hill with Oak Black Auburn News. I want to ask, what comes to mind when you think about the time you spent coaching with Brian Harson, and what sort of your expectations as far as what his approach is going to be at Auburn? I, I owe a tre tremendous amount of respect and debt to, to Coach Harson and the opportunities that he gave me and, and really a lot of the things that we do as a program are a direct result of the things that I learned from him and, and, and the way he implemented them at Arkansas State and Boise State. Uh, He's got a, a, a tremendous plan. Uh, the thing th about Coach Harson is he always has a plan for everything he does. And you're going to see that unfold at Auburn. Uh, I'm not up here to put undue expectations on anybody else. I think the Auburn fan base does that well enough by themselves. Uh, and so I got a job to do right here, and that's to, to coach and, and uh, represent the University of Missouri. And all the best to Brian and his family. Coach, we'll go all the way to the back of the center section. Hey, Coach. Steve Moulton, WZZN, ESPN Radio in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, pretty well documented last year, but uh, you mentioned your friendship with Gus Malzahn yeah. and was wondering if he had any advice for you about today and how surprising was it to see what happened to Gus last year at Auburn? Um, I don't think anything in this business catches you by surprise much anymore. Uh, so I don't necessarily know that I was – Caught by surprise, you know, disappointed for my for a mentor and a friend. Uh, his advice to me was to make sure I was really respectful to Bob, uh, and, and he says hi. Uh, and then after that, you know, don't don't pontificate. And then the last thing he said was, "Don't pick a fight with Kirk Herbstreit." Um, so go from there. Coach, we'll go in the center section again over here, right in front of us. Hey, Coach, how you doing today? Gerard Hamilton, the Tuscaloosa News. Since joining the SEC, it's not, it doesn't seem like uh, Mizzou really has a rivalry uh, in the conference. If Oklahoma joins the SEC, um, would you be excited to kind of rekindle that rivalry? I, I kind of like the rivalry we got with Arkansas. I mean, I don't remember the last time they beat us, so I, I kind of like that one. And the battle line rivalry, I mean, it's pretty good for us. So, Crud, I think we'll just keep that one right now. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, respect Sam and, and, and everything he's doing with that program. He's obviously doing a tremendous job. I'm from the state, and uh, so that makes it a little bit more special and a little added incentive. So I'm not going to speculate about anything. Uh, just because y'all don't think it's a rivalry doesn't mean it ain't a rivalry. It means a whole heck of a lot to my household, and I know it means a whole heck of a lot to Barrett Bannister's household, and I know we like having that trophy at the end of the game. So I think we'll keep the one that the commissioner set for us. Hey, we'll go in the center section again alongside the right aisle. Elia Corey Diaz with the Greenville News in South Carolina. When you reflect back on year one, what would you say are the most critical steps that you took as a first year head coach? What were some of those challenges and most important lessons that you learned? And then two, for the four new first year head coaches in this league, what would you tell them is awaiting them in this league? Um, I mean, I think the critical steps we took forward, uh, you know, obviously, in order to have a chance to, to win the SEC 